Hello. And thank you, Oregon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have to explain. Boris Johnson is the prime ministerial hopeful in the race to succeed Theresa May. The two front runners for the post of prime minister are the unfortunately named Jeremy Hunt and Boris Johnson. You can't exactly say that either of them would have a difficult time overtaking Mrs May in the race because by now her administration has all the energy of an asthmatic sloth. So I'm looking forward to the time when Hunt, got to be really careful with that name, and Johnson get to the finishing line together and then have to duke it out, probably with white papers at 50 paces. For the benefit of those not familiar with parliamentary procedure, when a law is submitted to the scrutiny of the House of Commons, the first draft is called the white paper. Then there's the committee stage, and then the revised law is brought to the vote as a green paper. So that's your British constitutional lesson for the day. Anyway, I was talking in my last video about a row Boris Johnson had with his girlfriend, which was so loud that the neighbours in the next flat were able to record it and then were contemptible enough to take the recording to the Guardian newspaper, which then was unscrupulous enough to print it. And the whole thing reminded me of the sort of tactics encouraged in the German Democratic Republic of old, where neighbours were prompted to spy on each other. For the good of the state, naturally. And in the interests of communist purity. And just when I thought that Britain was standing out as the new Stasi state, along comes Oregon, arresting politicians who happen not to agree with the ruling party. And Britain is off the hook. Oregon has a democratic majority in their Senate. 18 senators are Democrats and 12 are Republican. And in order to pass legislation, the Senate has to have a quorum of 20 senators present. So when Oregon wanted to pass a law with which the Republicans disagreed, but knew they'd be outgunned in a vote, seeing as they have only 12 to the Democrats 18, they hit on the tactic of not being there at all. And that meant there were only 18 sen senators there and too short of the quorum. All 12 senators had absented themselves, leaving 18 Democrats in place. This left the Democrats not only with no quorum, but a bit of a conundrum. But the governor, Kate Brown, got on the case. Did she do what Democrats, and I mean the philosophical Democrats, not the political party, uh, are supposed to do? Did she negotiate and persuade and cajole and, and even horse trade? No. What she did was send out the state troopers to round up the recalcitrant senators and bring them in so the Senate has its quorum. The law in question, by the way, is called the cap and trade law. And what it means is that every company and business has a carbon allowance. And when the limits of that allowance have been reached, the company has to buy or trade extra allowance from some other company, a, a company that might have a few points going spare and is willing to sell them. And Oregon isn't just logging sheep and fishing, you know. Among Oregon's major industries are transport, that is, trucking. After all, all that lumber, fish and mutton has to go somewhere to be sold, hasn't it? And trucks run on diesel mostly and there's very little more polluting than that. And manufacturing, textile, clothing, machinery, chemical, plastics, all of those will have some sort of environmental impact. Theoretically, the effect of such a law is to make high carbon emission companies suffer so much that they'll clean up their act in some way. Objectors say that all it will do is make some industries so expensive in Oregon that many will put up their prices while others will move ex elsewhere. More of that later. This reminded me of two things. And the first of these things was the medieval religious mentality.
There's no doubt that Ms. Brown and her Democratic Party supporters have a sense of mission which approaches the attitude of medieval Christians to their faith. Medieval Christians also believed in the power of suffering to bring, bring people back to God. I just want to remind you why the church burned heretics. After all, there are many ways to kill criminals and most of them involve the rope or the axe. But heretics got special treatment. It wasn't only a matter of uh, dying spectacularly painfully because, for instance, traitors were hung, drawn and quartered which is certainly just as unpleasant, if not more so, than being burnt. No, there was a special reason for burning heretics. You see, the idea was this. The church had complete possession of the truth. Everyone knew that. And everyone knew that if you rejected the church, you rejected truth itself. Now, there could be only one reason for rejecting truth. And that has to be, you're possessed by a demon. So what the church had to do was drive the demon out of your soul. In order to do that, they would have to make the physical environment so difficult, so painful, that the demon would just escape the body to get away from the pain. And the soul, being purged and then cleansed by the fire, would go to heaven, or at least to purgatory, rather than straight to the eternal fires of hell. So you see, burning a heretic, you were doing him a favour. And that's exactly how Miss Brown obviously feels about businesses in Oregon. She will make the environment so painful that they will clean themselves up and all will be sweetness and light. So, to that end, arresting a few Republican senators, well, as I say, it's all in a good cause, isn't it? And you will ultimately be doing them a favour. Now I come to the second point. You see, when you have controls like that, businesses tend not to like it. The thing about these companies is that they're not dragged out to the public square and put on top of a heap of firewood and tied to the stake. In the case of the Oregon environmentalists, actually, it probably wouldn't be a steak anyway, more like a stick of celery, but leave that one to one side. No, these businesses will simply up stakes and go to the next state, which will cause business closures and unemployment, which will only hit the poor. But of course, Ms. Brown doesn't care about them. I mentioned the German Democratic Republic before and the problems surrounding political purity in the GDR. And this caused some of its citizens to escape to countries with more temperate political systems. It caused the GDR a great deal of trouble. A lot of very brainy people were just running away. A lot of very important people, a lot of movers and shakers, a lot of scientists and teachers, they couldn't let that happen. The only way the GDR could stop the leaks and prevent people from going out was by, well, building a wall. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe and if you wish to donate, click the subscribe star link where you can make a one-off payment or set up a regular contribution. Or I have a PayPal account at grannyopteryx at gmail.com. Till next time.